is a timely step, but for the family and friends of Jayas Prajapati, it comes too late. Gas station attendants and late-night retailers will now have a place to report their accusations that employers are docking their wages after thefts. The Ontario Federation of Labour has just launched the Bad Gas Ripoff Hotline. It allows workers to report when they feel their bosses are breaking Ontario employment laws. The hotline comes in the wake of the death of gas attendant Jayesh Prajapati. As we told you this week, the 44-year-old father was killed when he tried to stop a vehicle that pulled away without paying for gas. Sid Ryan is the president of the Ontario Federation of Labour. We reached him in Toronto. Mr. Ryan, you have this hotline. What are you hearing? Are you getting calls? Yes, we've received about 35 phone calls in the last uh, 16, 18 hours or so. And uh, it's consistent what we're hearing across the entire province, mainly that uh, pump attendants are, in fact, being asked to pay for uh, gas and dashers out of their own pockets. And uh, I set the hotline up specifically to address the industry. Um, there is a, a Mr. Um, Bogue, I believe, is an industry spokesperson, and uh, he indicated that there are no gas stations across Ontario that are asking their employees to pay for gas and dashers. Uh, so I figured the best way of answering that uh, question would be to put up a hotline and see what what actually happens. In addition to what Mr. Bogue has said, that there is the manager of the Shell station where Mr. Prajapati, uh, the man who was killed, uh, was working. He says he doesn't he doesn't charge his workers and uh, for a gas and dash. How can you verify? How can you check any of the the, the messages and complaints you're getting on the hotline? How do I know that people are telling me the truth? Um, I mean, I have no reason to disbelieve them. The, you know, the, the stories are so consistent. And there are individuals that we've contacted who are willing to speak publicly on the record. There is one woman named Deborah Palmer right now, and uh, she has indicated that she was basically fired for not paying the cost of, uh, of somebody who had, had drove away, uh, not paid the $65 and the employer put it to her, pay up or be fired. She got fired, and uh, she took it to the Labour Board, and it's before the Labour Board right now. I would ask the Ministry of Labour to send somebody out from the Employment Standards Branch and do some spot checks like we do for health and safety violations on construction sites. Not to suggest that the people calling are, are lying about it. It's just that the situation is that the, if the industry is saying it, it doesn't happen, it didn't happen, and the workers are saying it does, how do you find out? How can this be tested? I think the best way is to have the ministry send in some inspectors and talk to the, to the owners of the franchises and then speak to the employees. You know, I, I've had some uh, folks as well phone in, um, franchise operators, who said they would actually help us, that they believe this is also happening. So, I mean, this is, what I, this is one of the reasons why I've asked the police to investigate Shell Canada's involvement in all of this. You know, are they culpable in any ways? Um, they micromanage this sector, this industry. The, everything from, uh, you know, what the charge for gasoline, what the franchise charges for gasoline, any of the ancillary services like chocolate bars, newspapers, right down to, to basically to the toilet paper. Um, they micromanage every aspect of it. And I just find it hard to believe that they do not, therefore, have any say in the employees and what they get paid and their working conditions. So when the oil industry says to the franchise operator, you have to pay for every single liter of gas that we put into your, into your tank on the ground, and you have to account for that. And what I'm hearing back from, from one woman, at least, who ran two franchises a number of years ago, she said that she was forced by a representative of the oil company to sign a contract with her employees, um, saying to the employees that you are responsible for any gas that would be stolen, and it will come out of your paycheck. You know, she said she never engaged in that herself, but this was what the, uh, in order to be able to continue to have that franchise, um, this is what she had to agree to. So, so after a while, um, when you put all of the anecdotal information together, somebody's not telling the truth here. Um, I believe that you know, these minimum wage workers are being placed in a situation where uh, they believe that they have to prevent these folks from gassing and dashing, otherwise they're out of pocket. I mean, I think this poor man that lost his life, he saw roughly a day and a half's wages driving out of that gas station, and he did all in his power to try to stop them. Unfortunately, he lost his life.
On the issue of Shell Canada's involvement, it's said since the death of Mr. Pajapati that the company's policy is not to try and stop a gas and dash customer and not to charge the employee for that loss. And just yesterday, they issued a statement saying that, uh, quote, we have reminded our operators that it is illegal to charge sales associates for driveaways, and there will continue to be zero tolerance for this in the Shell network. Do you have any confidence that the company, that the industry itself, will take care of this? I mean, in my mind, they've created a condition here where workers honestly believe that they are responsible for the stolen gas and that they have to pony up out of their own meager wages to pay for it. Um, that's a condition that they have created. I'm positive that's a condition that they know about and have done nothing about it up until this point. And if I was to believe the woman who, who wrote in to me and said she believes it, or she had to sign a contract with her employees, which the oil company forced upon her, then I would argue that the Shell organization in particular um, have some responsibility here in the death of this man um, because he created a condition where he believed he would be out of pocket and therefore he put himself in danger. Um, that has created, uh, you know, an unsafe work environment. But underneath Bill C-45, which is the part of the criminal code, which means if an employer is found to be negligent in any way in the injury or death of a worker, they can be criminally charged. I would argue in this instance that Shell Canada has placed themselves in that situation by turning a blind eye to what is actually happening on the ground in their franchises. And they know about it, and they've done nothing up to this point. All right, we'll leave it there. Mr. Ryan, thank you. Okay, I appreciate it, Carol. Thank you. Sid Ryan is the president of the Ontario Federation of Labour. That organization just launched the Bad Gas Ripoff Hotline. Hotline allows gas attendants and late-night retailers to report bosses they feel are breaking Ontario employment laws and docking wages after thefts. After we spoke to Mr. Ryan, who we reached in Toronto, we did request an interview with a spokesperson from Shell Canada, but thus far nobody has been put forward. This week we have been presenting the ongoing discussion